unpredictable. I was in San Diego. I'm in San Diego for a real estate event because that's my main bread and butter. So I'm riding a bicycle on a San Diego Harbor. You're, you're hanging loose, sitting in the frunk of a Model 3, right? The frunk is the front trunk what? of a Model 3 Tesla. Okay. I asked you if you were all right. Uh, unplugged performance, which is next to the Tesla Hawthorne Design Center. I believe that's where everything started. A lot of their design work, their engineers. So, unplugged performance was next to that. That's where we had the event. Earlier in the show, how much fun it was. Hey everyone, uh, we're here at the 2022 uh, Tesla Roadster Meetup event. Uh, it's great to get everybody together. It's been obviously a few years because since this has happened. I thought I was floating on air. 35 roasters all in one place with a lot of original owners. With uh, everything that's happened in the world. And I'm here with Bob. Bob's one of the original owners of a very orange uh, serial number 457. Bob, where are you from? I'm from Los Angeles. You're LA. Okay. And uh, tell us, you're an original owner, and you have a 2008? Uh, Luke. And anyways, I'm on the train heading home. Mm -hmm. I got off at the next stop because I knew that this event was, was the shit. And uh, I started 23 years ago, but in 2013 we got this building and we caught the attention of uh, some directors at the design studio who are still there today. And they knocked on our door uh, right here. We gave them a tour of our facility, and they asked us what we thought about modifying Teslas. It was a very casual conversation, and that opened our eyes to uh, what a lot of you saw even before us. We were fairly early in creating an aftermarket and a track day culture and a modification culture for Teslas in 2013, but you guys were the earliest. Uh, even uh, I took the train from Chicago to San Diego, okay. just for an experience. You know, went right across, slept on the train for two days, met a whole bunch of people, we had a blast. But anyways, I'm on the train heading back after the event. And a friend of mine from London, Ontario, which is about two hours from where we are right now, he has a Tesla Roadster. Oh, okay. He saw that I was in San Diego okay. on my Instagram. Okay. And he asked if I was going to the Tesla Roadster event in Hawthorne, California. Interesting. At the okay. Tesla Design Center. Okay. Well, I didn't even know the event was off because I kind of shut off my social media for, for a few days for the trip. I just wanted to concentrate on the real estate right, function. Right, right. So anyways, I say, what? What Roadster event? And he's like, man, there's 35 of us meeting in Hawthorne. California because he works in robotics in uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Here we had an awesome uh, drive-in movie for Blade Runner with Cybertruck launch that was here. We love doing this stuff. We don't do it too often, but we love doing it. Uh, and when Mac reached out, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Uh, we're just here to be members of the community and to you know support each other, to support you guys, and to support the mission. So. Uh, board, our mission is really to just share the passion that we all have about driving electric cars and to illustrate just how great they are. And events like this are the best because these are the original guys that were there, you know, at the ground level. Now, I want to ask you something about the Tesla Roadster specifically because that's what we're featuring here today. Yeah. What was the first Tesla Roadster you saw and the one that you first drove and what were your thoughts? Oh man, this is a long, long time ago now. It feels like a past lifetime. I don't even remember the first one, uh, but I do remember my first impression, which was I thought it was a very strange Lotus, and I, I, I didn't, because I'm a car guy, so right away, even before I really understood a lot about Tesla, I understood it was based on the Lotus, and it was intriguing, because also, you know, it was a curiosity for me, because Lotus' ethos is a lightweight car, and making it heavy, I was kind of confused about the platform choice but then I started understanding the car and seeing how fast it was and exciting it was and how eyes were being come, coming opened up and it became something went from a curiosity to something and all the other roadster owners that we all talked 
I'm like, man, I could meet all these guys in person. The selected few of the 1500 selected few of the world, you get a piece of that in one group. The top of the food chain because yeah. you're in California. Uh -huh. What we feel is, you know, just the most iconic car on the planet. Uh, over the years, you know, it looks more of an obvious choice, but it really wasn't. It was just a passion decision. And, uh, you know, the, our purpose is the same as every purpose of a roadster on, on the road. You drive this car, you enjoy it, others see you enjoy it. And people realize there's a different option out there to purchase. Uh, and those options have evolved. Jason pulled up in a, a Plaid Model X, so we've come a long way from the original roadster. Helpful and supportive of these Tesla Roadster owners, okay. which I believe there's only about 1,500 in the world. Yeah. Our technical center, which is uh, one building behind this building, uh, I'd be pleased to give you guys a behind the scenes tour of that. Inside of there we have a very interesting Model 3 that uh, was a previous Pikes Peak car that crashed. We decided to uh, make some lemonade out of lemons. Any questions on what we do? We're not here to pitch or sell anything, but we are here to help. Uh, we are unique in the respect that we're really the only aftermarket Tesla shop that's Tesla authorized to do work on cars, so. Uh, President of the Los Angeles Tesla Owners Club or Tesla Club LA. I'm the luckiest guy in life, man, as far as I know. You know, he's the NASA scientist. Okay. There was a car there that was featured on Jay Leno's uh, garage. Electric, or no, it wasn't electric blue, there was a blue one. With So, th literally, from getting on the train, heading home after the event, mm -hmm. three hours later, I'm driving a Roadster on the streets of L.A. Mm. I thought it was in a dream. Wow. It was amazing. Wow. We hope to do this event every few years. Uh, we know that it's going to be dwindling numbers as the cars uh, become more and more rare and fewer and fewer of them are being driven. Uh, let's see, we'll just we'll do a simple straw uh, hands thing here. Whose car has more than 50,000 miles on it? Raise your hand, okay? More than 70,000 miles on it? One, two, three, okay. Who's got more than 90,000 miles on it? So we've got between 70 and 90. So how many do you have? 77. 77. What do you have over here? Yeah, same. What was it? 72. 72. So you had 77. So we have the highest mile of 77. And it's still still original battery pack? Yeah. It's still original battery pack. So yeah, as you can see, they, uh, you know, Tesla originally told us when we bought these cars, they hoped that 100,000 miles or 10 years, it was supposed to have 70% capacity. Uh, most of the cars have well exceeded that expectation. Um, they're still on the road, they're still driving, they're still working. We have wonderful places like this and, and uh, Medlock up north and Peter Gruber, uh, <laughs> you know, who are doing uh, their best to keep the Tesla Roadsters alive and keep them on the road. Um, we do appreciate everybody for keeping them and coming today. Uh, hopefully anybody who's in the LA area, hopefully you are part of our LA Tesla Club. We do our monthly events. Uh, we had our scavenger hunt uh, two weeks ago, had a great time. Our next event is on the 21st, so I think there's one or two slots left. We're doing the Peterson Automotive Museum, so if you haven't been there recently, cool museum, we're doing the vault tour. Um, go on our website and uh, you can sign up for that one uh, next month. Prior to this, I had one, uh -huh. which was Canada's first official Tesla Roadster, serial number 902. There's three cars here that are for sale, so Desi's car. 1094, right? I think that's right there. It's, it has a for sale sign on it. I'd rather see these cars go to owners like us or people who you feel would take care of these cars versus you know being sold back to Tesla. Um, there's there's these two cars here, VIN 197, I think, and then VIN 1165. These are owned by um, Medlock and Sons, so you can talk to them. I don't know the pricing for any of these cars. Um, and uh, and for, for Thomas and Eric, they actually had their cars shipped here. Um, so that one of one purple car, that's not that's not wrapped, it's not um, it's not repainted, it's actually original. So he shipped it here from Texas, Eric's car. And, um, and Thomas, you have your VP, right? Um, 24, the white one, also. Which we had at the event today. Ah, uh, okay. Now, through this making, uh, coincidentally with Dan Warner from RM Sotheby's. Now I own two. Out of fifteen hundred, yeah, that's big. That's that's huge. I mean, um, Patrick, they own they own their grocers in Canada. So bin nine hundred two and bin five thirty one. They just happen to be here 
on business, um, like on business trips. But because our community is so small and we're so, you know, so, so tightly knit, they, they, they somehow found out about this event. They reached out to me and they're here. Um, what else? Okay. This is important. I know you sit in your car. Don't and and I would say if you need if you need miles, um, maybe like at ten o'clock or, or nine thirty, nine forty five. Just kind of um, drive there, bring out your can senior. I have I have one. You can borrow mine if, if you didn't bring yours and charge for an hour or an hour and a half. And at least you get thirty miles. And you'll probably be able to make. You should be fine to Malibu. The, the, the Malibu um, destination is at a cafe. You don't have, you don't have to eat there, right? But it's just really just to enjoy the, the scenic drive. Um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and the the uh, the tour, the techno, I think I think it's a uh, it the technology factory bin that 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 your one of your buildings is called. So how do you like? Oh, is you it mean that the color? Model 3? Model? Oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're Team Red. Right. My right. wife has a Team Red. Oh, Model 3? Model 3, as well. Yeah. It's red, white, and shoe. Oh, yeah, I love the white and shoe. Yes. So what is your Instagram again? Uh, Mr. Tesla Canada. Mr. Tesla Canada. You'll see my roadster there. Hey, I'm here with Knack. Knack was the organizer of this event today. It's the 2022 uh, Tesla Meetup Roundup. Hasn't happened in a few years. We're really happy that it's taken place. Knack, how do you like your Roadster? Oh, I love it. I love it. I, I try to drive it anytime, anytime you get a chance. You know, I love driving it, taking it out. Having people see the Roadster. Um, I think there are so few of them out there that they just, you know, they're in awe when they see our cars, especially Tesla owners. Um, not don't have never seen a roaster. <laughs> awesome. awesome. We all love our Teslas. <laughs> tell me what you love about your roaster, Peter and Hillary. I love I love the uniqueness. I mean, there's just nothing else on the road, right? Uh, I think outside of the meetings, I don't think I've ever seen another one in the wild. Yeah, yeah. And it just feels like, and it feels like you're getting away. Every time you drive it, it feels like you're getting away. Like you're like tossing your toy out on the road, yeah. and like someone's gonna catch you and say, like, "There's absolutely no way." Your toy back in the yard. Yeah. Like, no. yeah. It's just awesome. I get people that are like, oh, it's like a dinky car. And I'm like, yes, it is. It's like a go car. Right. It is. It's really so, cool. And it's a conversation starter, right? Uh, we did cruise um, a little bit, but I never remember that specifically. You know, like this here was a memorable experience. Well, just looking, one, cruising in a Tesla Roadster on Pacific Highway to Malibu. I passed uh, a tavern, I think it said Patrick's Roadhouse, <laughs> with the dinosaurs and stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? There's a bunch of dinosaurs. We're passing $20 million, you know, Hollywood estates, right? Uh, it was just, it was the experience, especially cruising in my favorite car. I, I just, like I said, I thought I was just floating on air. Because wow. I was, I was. I didn't even know if it was real. Like it's, <laughs> everything seemed like a dream. Okay. And that's just one part. Uh, just all the guys that everybody was talking on Facebook and you got to meet them in person mm -hmm. You know that and then to top it off we all jump into cars <laughs> And we're cruising down Pacific Highway to Malibu Beach. I've never been in these areas before Well, that was it, the place was packed We so we parked on the road on the side of Pacific Highway 
we walked down to the water, we, everybody grabbed a cold drink, and everybody just started to chit-chat. We're on Pacific Highway in Malibu, Cali. I want to show you some cars. This car. Custom Roadster. I find the hotel where Carl's going. He was shipping two Roadsters down from, he's in Seattle, Washington. Hey everyone, Mr. Tesla Canada. Here we are on Pacific Highway in Malibu. I want to show you some cars. This is from Medlock, Carl Medlock. This is a custom car. Get it up, Roadster. We got over about five million dollars in Roadsters here. I want to show you a special one. This one here is a pre-production, what they call a BP. Was a unit even before production. This was a test model. This is the 16th Tesla Roadster that was made here in California. So what they call this is a Signature 100. Very rare. From Malibu, California, Mr. Tesla Canada. Amongst all these beautiful roadsters. Lock, I said, where are you staying? Oh, yeah. Carl Medlock, Medlock and Sons. He works on a Tesla Roadster. Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Tesla Canada here, and I'm with a couple of living legends here. What I have here is Carl Medlock. Known as a Roadster Whisperer. Known as the Tesla Roadster Whisperer. We know each other through the private Tesla Roadster group on Facebook. Now, Carl was one of the first 300 employees at Tesla Motors. And Carl, can you tell me a little bit about your journey and what it is that you do now? Living legend here. We got his boys, we got his offspring. All right? His dad, Austin, tell us, tell us so the, the truth. truth is, Austin <laughs> was my first employee because he didn't have a job and I needed somebody. I didn't have any money, so so how that went. <laughs> We we, uh, we we work on the roadsters from end to end, top to bottom. We do the uh, all the electrical components, from the battery to uh, the little components that are inside, to suspension work, to custom work, to body work. To we do everything. <laughs> so Austin does everything. He he can rebuild a car from top to bottom by himself. End to end. Austin. Uh, I mostly do uh, mechanical and cosmetic stuff. So anything from buffing to suspension to paint protection film and a lot more. Knowledge is power, right? And I learned from uh, one of the advantages I have over anybody else working on these cars is I was friends with the, uh, I made connections with all the engineers at Tesla at the beginning because there wasn't a shop manual. And when we were out in the field, Calgary, minus 40 degrees, you know, out there str struggling in the snow trying to fix a car. All I had to do was pick up an engine, phone call, pick up a phone, call an engineer, and I had my problem resolved. And I told that you do, man. It's awesome. We all got the same focus, keeping the roachers alive. Yeah, he's great. His his son, he got two boys that help him in the business. Probably going to be the next generation uh -huh. that's going to you know help to preserve and save yeah. these roadsters. Well, I think you know my general knowledge for everything was there. I cemented. Right? Yeah, okay. Everything was cemented. Like I didn't realize how supportive the, the Tesla Roadster community is, which translates to a larger group of people, which is EV owners. So the dedication of the Tesla Roadster owners, but then transfers to the EV, then you can really see the commitment and the focus for this next really vehicle which seems to be taking over which I actually drove in and that one there was a very special car because that's pre-production Elon Musk owns 001 okay his his black roadster mm -hmm. another roadster and most people know who follow Tesla he shot into outer space and is floating in outer space for eternity. Ah, uh, from a Tesla. Okay. Yeah, now that one is radiant red in color. The one that I have in Arizona is radiant red. This one here in Canada is fusion red, which is Canadian colors. Ah. Uh, right? Okay. So, there, there's the support, everybody's knowledge, and then the fact that the dedication of all these owners 
gets into me thinking of a deeper passion. And a deeper passion is how the electric vehicle, even though we've had so much good luck with the vehicles and where they're at right now, how the electric vehicle, I keep saying it, is a better buggy. Because there's less loss of energy. The energy from the battery goes direct to the engine, direct to the tire, direct to the pavement. So it costs less, and it's the best performance that you can have. So anybody that likes a good performing car, although I love the sound of headers, you know, and the sound of a muscle car. I, that's where I started, 1970 Charger with the 383, man. That's You don't get a better muscle car than that. But when you drive the power of an electric vehicle, my Plaid has 1,020 horsepower direct to the road. It's two G's of force that throws you back in your seat. This is an unexplainable feeling that everybody should experience.